Marco Branham, the new point leader in the JNS Steel Sportsman Division. That's the field, nine cars ready to run. Here they come off turn four. Another Saturday night of short track racing action takes the green flag as they run side by side. Door to door up into turn two. How about three wide right off the bat? Here comes Ben Huff through on the inside with the 29 going for the lead. Shagnon has it on the outside right now with car number 86. But Ben Huff with a good line off of turn number four. Down the front stretch, he'll have the lead on lap one. Ben Huff is the leader. Four wide now into one and two as the 57 of Stoner got a little squirrely. The 96 of Nick Lagoy had to go to the top of the racetrack. Ben Huff's the leader. Here comes Bill Twaits with a 69. Twaits to the inside, trying to take the lead off of turn number four. They touch, they rub and lean on one another off the fourth turn. Down the front stretch, they bang again into turn number one. Twaits right down to the inside. Huff in the 29, hanging on to the lead off turn number two. They're dead even in the middle of the back stretch, going to turn number three. Ben Huff with the 29, sticks the nose back out in front. Here comes Twaits back down on the inside, off turn number four, down the front stretch. Ben Huff at the stripe. Again, they touch along the front stretch. Racing into turns one and two, they're even. Twaits had the lead on the inside of two. Now the 29 of Huff is even again. He takes the lead back going into turn three. Side by side, racing for third. The 20 of Branham, the 11 of Bushy, the 18 of Duquette also in the mix. This time at the stripe, it's Billy Twaits with the lead by three feet. Van Huff trying to hang with him on the outside. He'll go to the top of turn number two, try to take advantage of the progressive banking down the back stretch. Can't quite get that shot enough to get him back into a tied position with a 69. Bill Twaits going to complete the pass, and here comes Buck O'Branham with him on the inside. Halfway in the first qualifier for the Jan Steel Sportsman cars were pretty racy in this first qualifier. Twaits has the lead. Branham runs second, third. Ben Huff now on the 29. He'll settle to the inside. They bump it up a little bit as they got on the binders going into the third turn and Huff was still on the gas as he tried to get down to the inside and take that spot away from Duquette. Duquette now looks to the inside of the Huff 29 into turn number one. Ben Huff has the line. He'll hang on to third. Bucko Branham looking to the outside of Billy Twaits for the lead. Trying to draw even into the third turn. They are dead even racing into turn number four. Here they come down the front stretch. It's a drag race for the lead and it's Bucko Branham's at the strike by two feet. Branham in the bun light, number 20 had the lead. Twaits trying to fight back on the inside, but the 20 is hooked on the rim. And he is going to pull away down the back stretch into turn number three. Twaits running in that third spot, side by side, or in the second spot rather, side by side for third are Huff and Bushy. Two laps to go for Bucko Branham. A three car battle for third between Sean Duquette, Ben Huff, and the 11 of Jim Bushy. The battle up front continues. Bucko Branham in the 20, trying to put away Bill Twaits. Twaits gets a good run into turn number four and down the front stretch. This time, though, Branham should be able to clear him as the white flag is out. He does. He clears him into turn number one. Three wide racing into turns one and two for the third spot. Branham's lead, two car lengths. Billy Twaits in second with a 69, but keep an eye on the battle for third. Sean Duquette backed out of a three wide move into three and four. Checkered flag is out. Bucko Branham. And the 20 gets the win. Second goes to Billy Twaits. Three wide for third. Jimmy Bushy on the outside gets third. And shotgun on the field with the number 93. It is Chris Frontier. That's the field. Ten cars ready to run. Green flag. Travis Bruno pulling away off turn number two and building up a sizable lead early on. It's already four car lengths down the back stretch. The 77 of Rick Frenier runs second. That inside line trying to move. Tyler Terry in the 44, looking for room to the inside of the 68. He's got it. He's moving on through. And that outside line is backing up. Jamie Begor in the 19 was a little hot going into turn number one. He had a little bang with the 68 of Jamie Atkins. That straightened out his car. Everybody was okay, though, going through turns one and two. Out front, the 33 of Travis Bruno is showing the way as he leads by seven car lengths. Bill Sawyer with the 39 running in the second spot. We've got a spin over in turn four. It's the 68 of GM certificates for one month free storage that we will add to our 50-50 tonight. Thanks to Jim Pulsifer for bringing that up. Ready to go again. Here they come off turn number four. Green flag back out on the second qualifier. Travis Bruno and Bill Sawyer in row number one. Sawyer's running with them on the outside. He gets real good bite over in turn number two. He drives away down the back stretch. Bill Sawyer takes the lead into three. Travis Bruno coming back after him with the 33, but that 39 car was able to cut down to the inside. Took away some of the momentum from Bruno. And look at Begor run with a 19. Jamie Begor to third, eyeing second. 
as Travis Bruno runs off the top of turn number two. Here comes Bigor in the 19 to the inside. Tyler Terry in car number 44 runs to the four spot. He's looking to move, perhaps diving down to the inside, but Rick Frenier's there with the 77 as they jockey for position inside the top five. Bruno will hang on to third. He's able to get down to the inside. The 77 of Frenier was sideways going into turn number two. He lost a couple of car links to the 44 of Tyler Terry. Now he's going to have to fight with Nick Haywood and Robin Wood for that fifth spot. Halfway this time by, here comes the leader, Bill Sawyer out of Milton, Vermont. The Harrison Concrete 39. Second, Jamie Begor with the 19. He is about four car lengths back, making three off turn number two. And there goes Terry, Tyler Terry, after the 33 of Travis Bruno. They're even down the back stretch into turns three and four. Three wide racing for the fifth spot right behind him. Robin Wood on the inside, Nick Hay with the 29 on the outside. Rick Frenier in the 77. He's going to go back to the seventh spot with that 77 car. Out front, the 39 of Sawyer. His lead is three. Closing, though, within two is Jamie Begor. Side by side, running door to door for the third position. The 33 of Bruno and the 44 of Tyler Terry. Tyler Terry has that third spot at the stripe. Jamie Begor closing in onto the back bumper of Bill Sawyer in one and two, but the lead off to is a car length. Terry trying to finish the pass down the back stretch into the third turn of Travis Bruno. Bruno coming back after him with the 33 car, and Robin Wood is closing in on that battle for third. 39 of Sawyer shows the way. Bigor second with a 19. Third, Tyler Terry with a 44. Fourth is Travis Bruno. Fifth, Robin Wood. And Robin Wood sizing up the 33, trying to get into that fourth spot. White flag is out. Final time for the 39 of Sawyer. Well, Jamie Bigor lost a lot of ground on Sawyer that, uh, that last lap. Really seemed to struggle going into turn number four. And he is falling back towards the 44 car of Tyler Terry. He lost a whole lot of ground into the fourth turn. Here's the checkered flag. Bill Sawyer is going to win it. The 19 of Jamie Bigor will finish second. Tyler Terry third. Robin Wood fourth. Maybe Fifth will come back. Two. It's Martinois and shotgun on the field in the B3. It's Aaron Barnaby, the TDI repair center. TDI repair facility B3 machine. He's from Shildon, Vermont. Finney's 26, darting right in the middle of the backstretch. As 12 machines run in this first qualifier, the 18 of KA. Boxed up with the 17 of Bergen, and the 18 appears to have broke on the left front. So that's going to bring out a yellow flag. Three and four. Let's see when they get the hammer. All right, here they come on the hammer now. Green flag. Andy Haywood and Mike Finney racing into turn number two. Haywood shows the way. Finney gets a good run off the top of the second turn, trying to take that top spot away. Don Scarborough on the 11 tries to work the inside of the racetrack. Here he comes through on the inside, and he will have the third spot at the strike. They run wheel to wheel for the lead. Finney again to the top of turn number two, has momentum down the back stretch, and he has the lead in the third turn. Andy Haywood trying to hold on to it. Off turn number four, down along the front stretch. They race to the strike. Mike Finney in the lead. Finney in the 26P debuted that car last week. Has the lead of the qualifier. We've got a spin at the back. The three of Andy Powell, the CO2 of Craig Riel involved. And that is going to bring out a yellow flag. Let's see how he does down on the inside. All right, on the hammer again, off the fourth turn. Racing in this first qualifier. For the Ernie's Discount Tools Modifieds. And there's a little tap. Haywood, the 80, the 17 of Durgan, flying off the top of turn number two. That's going to bring out another yellow flag. I think very soon for victories around the big A. All right, ready to go again. Green flag back out. Finney with the 26P. Scarborough with the 11. The Brandon Bannon running off the top of turn number two. He's a half car length off the back of the 26. Martin Roth runs third with a 90. Lifting up that left front tire right off the racetrack. He'll follow Scarborough along the front stretch now. Dive down to the inside at turn number one. Scarborough gets a good run towards the top of the track, hanging on to the second spot. Finney in the 26 with the lead. Scarborough with the 11 run second. Here comes the 90 again back down to the inside. They're halfway in the first qualifier. Finney in the 26. Scarborough with the 11. Martin Roy with the 90. Then a big gap back to the double nickel for Matt Woodruff. Barnaby runs in the fifth spot. Three cars duking it out. The top three spots. Here comes Martin Roy through on the inside. He goes to second. Making the pass along the front stretch. That car hooked. 
stuck down on the inside and powered underneath Scarborough, who is falling back now. Martanoa continues to have the 26P in sight. Right on the back bumper as they race along the front stretch. He's a half car length back. Now going to the outside of the track, diamonding the turner down the, the turn rather back down towards the inside. Now back to the outside as he tries to draw even into turn number three. Averaging just over 100 miles an hour around the track, Martin Wa has the lead at the stripe. Martin Wa in the Gamash Truck Center number 90, pulling away now from Mike Finney in the 26P. Here comes Martin Wa to take the white flag. One to go. Jason Durgan with a 17 clobbers the front stretch wall. The front tire goes flying off the 17 car. Checkers and yellow flag out. Martin Wa will get the victory. Second to Mike Finney with a 26P. Don Scarborough with the 11 third. Fourth to Matt Woodruff. Fifth to Aaron Barnaby with a B3. Aaron at Country Store 24. And shotgun on the field. Craig Ormsby in the zero. Craig is from Plattsburgh. Three flag. Pat McGrail with a 10, moving down to the inside, slicing and dicing his way to the front. Pierre Bertillon works down to the inside. He was able to move past the 76 of Mike Wells. The leader of lap number one is Pat McGrail. Mike Riel runs second. Bertillon with a one, trying to find room down the inside. Leon Gagneau follows him around the racetrack. Keep an eye on the 24 of Patrick Dupree. He's boxed to the inside right now, trying to find some running room. Mike Riel with a 0-2, running in that second spot. Running third is Jason Bruno with a 6.23. Bertio with a one, still in fourth. He's boxed because he's got the one of Atkins on the outside. Now he'll go to the inside, trying to get that third spot away. Bruno hangs onto it for now. Good racing from third. Jason Bruno's on the hot seat. Everybody trying to hunt down the 6.23 for third. The one of Bertio can't quite get there off turn number two. Bruno will hang on to that third spot. Bertio coming back after him on the inside. Again, it doesn't work. One of Atkins smoking up the right rear. He runs the middle of the racetrack. They slice and dice for position. Leon Gagneau runs right behind him. Patrick Dupree runs right behind him. Dupree can't find any running. Bertio with the one will go to the outside. Dupree three wide, backed out of it, going into turn number three. Bertio with the one, running in fourth. He's falling back from the 623 of Bruno. He was able to stand his ground and hang on to that third spot. Pat McGrail's checking out. He's making it ugly out front, but don't watch the front. Keep an eye on the battle for fourth. Four cars now going after it. Bertio with the one. The one New York of Atkins. The four of Gagno. The 24 of Patrick Dupree. You want to get your handicapped spot. Of course, Dupree typically starts back around the 14th position anyway, so he has to charge from fairly deep in the field. But right now, he is stuck in the sixth spot. Seven laps complete. Patrice McGrail, his lead is almost the full backstretch over Mike Riel. Third is still the 623 of Jason Bruno, who has done a nice job of hanging on to that third spot. The one of Bertio is fourth. Fifth is Leon Gagneau. Feeling the heat now from Patrick Dupree, who goes to the outside with two laps to go. Bertio looks to the inside of the 623. Again, no racing room. The 24 of Dupree has gone around Gagneau, now looking around Bertio, around the 623 as well as they were three wide in a turn three. White flag is out for the 10 of McGrail. Dupree is gonna go all the way to third with the Saranac Country Store 24. Working the outside of the racetrack to the third spot. Here comes Pat McGrail off four. Easy win for Pat McGrail. Second for the 0-2 of Mike Riel. Third, Patrick Dupree. Fourth, Jason Bruno. Fifth, Pierre Bertio. Sixth, Mike Wells. Seventh, Greg Atkins. Eighth to Craig Ormsby. And Leon Gagneau had problems. New York, driving the Universal Technical Institute 74 modified. That's the field. Green flag. Three wide and the drop of the green flag. That was dangerous. But everybody was able to shake it out as eventually the six for Chad Blair. He got on the binders a little bit, backed out of it. 26 of Hornsby working in the middle of the track was able to power past. Out front it's Dan Brown, but he was headed right towards that fourth turn of the wall. That allowed Michel Vienne to close up with a 46 car. Brown's got the lead by two car lengths. The Viennes, father and son, son in the 25, father in the 46, the racing bakers from Saint Cesaire, Quebec. They run and operate the Riel Bakery. One of 
Rick's favorite institutions in the province of Quebec because they make wonderful pastries that he eats about a dozen of every Sunday and Monday morning. Dan Brown is out front, but for how much longer? Uh, no longer because the 46 of Eusebia has taken the lead. Max Vienna, the 25, will go to the second spot. Three drivers from the province of Quebec running up front, but that 78 of Vince Quinville was fast in one of the final practice sessions. Matter of fact, turn uh, some of the fa fastest times with that 78 machine, and he's going to third. Vince Quinville on the move to third. Dan Brown back to fourth with the number 40. Fifth is Todd Orsby. Running in the sixth spot is the number six for Chad Player. Seventh is the 28 for Brian Tritt. Halfway, halfway for the 46 of Michel Vienne. He's got his son, Max, right behind him. Michel leads. Max is second. Vince Quinville's chasing him down with that 78, and it's a good gap back to the 26 of Todd Orsby. He is fourth. Fifth is Chad Player with the number six. Brian Tribb was able to finish second last week, running in the sixth position with the number 28. Dan Ruprak with a 74, moving down to the inside with his Universal Technical Institute modified. Ruprak's been fighting pneumonia in that 74. Vince Quinville in the 78 will take the second spot away from Max Vien. With two laps to go, Michel will try to hold off the Brandon Vermont driver. Quinville running in the second spot. Dan Brown's gone back to the garage area with the turn of Miles 40. The 74 of Ruprak smoking along the backstretch. Let's see, uh, he will head into the infield. White flag out for Michel Vienne with a 46. Three car lengths back, Vince Quinville with that 78. It's the same distance back to Max, who is running third. Quinville closing in three and four. Here they come along the front stretch. Not enough time. Michel Vienne wins it. Vince Quinville runs second. Max Vienne third. Todd Owens be fourth. Chad Blair fifth. Sixth to Brian Tripp. Outside Seven. the second row. That's Jimmy Varno in the 11. The 20 car for Jamie LaFountain starts inside row three. Outside it's the Archer 21. Brian 21 car. Green flag is out. Jimmy Collins in the 0 2. And Stone Cold Steve Brissett in the 59. That's the field of minis for qualifier number one. Five will it qualify for their handicap spot. Riel leads the field. Look out, some contact from Howard. Holy cow. That gives the lead to the Magnum. 357, Kurt Seymour. We saw Kurt at the Demolition Derby pick up a qualifying spot in the main event and do a dance on top of the car. It was his Curtis shuffle. Four wide action into turn three. Archer on the bottom of the racetrack had to back off as those cars headed into turn four. Seymour leads the way. Stone Cold having a hard time working his way through traffic. He remains mired at the back of the pack. Now he's got an opening on the inside and he looks to pick off the Archer 21. Look out, there goes Howard once again. And Devano's back in. Caution flag. Three down, three to go. Seymour and LaFountain pick it up, coming off turn four. Back to the green. Good jump on the outside for Jamie LaFountain, just like he was running away from one of those snakes that his mother's afraid of. Powers by up the back stretch. Leaves Seymour in his wake, who settles into the number two spot. How do you know she's afraid of snakes? Take my word for it. Brissette on the outside, moves into the number three spot. Black flag is out on the Riel number two. Fluid leaking out of the two car. Howard just got into that fluid. Stone Cold moves up on the inside of Seymour. They battle for the number two spot. It's going to belong to Brissette. One to go. Jamie LaFountain is your leader. Trying to hold off Stone Cold Steve Brissette for half a lap. Seymour third, Collins fourth. They come off turn four the final time. Checkered in the air for Jamie LaFountain. Stone Cold finishes second. The Magnum finishes third. 
The 0-2 of Jimmy Collins gets One car scratching from this event, the 33 car of Jason Chris. Green flag is out, and it's a good jump for the turn. He leads the pack in a turn two and up the back stretch. Here comes Chris Clark on the move. He'll move, pull right alongside the LeVere five. Bordeaux leads the way. LeVere on the bottom. Clark on the outside. Here comes Donor moving up to make it a four car battle for the number one spot. Inside line opens up. Bobby LeVere takes advantage of it. He grabs the lead off the back stretch. Look out, there goes that brown turd into the bunker once again. What is it about the brown turd and bunkers? Clark into second. Here comes the captain on the inside. He'll challenge for that number two spot in the Watson Glass 95. Donor now takes second. LeVere is your leader. But there's room on the inside for the 95 if Donor wants to move on through. Here they come off turn four. They'll see the halfway sign, and Rick Donor is going to be the leader. LeVere trying to stick right with him on the outside, but as they hit up the back stretch, the 95 opens up a couple of car lengths. LeVere settles into second. Clark runs third. Justin Donor is fourth. The brown turd is fifth. Two to go. Justin Donor in the one, trying to find a way by the 77 of Chris Clark. But Clark opens up a couple of car links once again. White fly out for the captain. Donor strong up front once again. Looking for win number five on the season tonight. He leads the pack off turn four. Checkered flag in the air. Your winner of qualifier number two, the 95 of Rick Donor. Bobby LeVere finishes second. Justin Donor gets the third spot. Chris Clark will be fourth. And the brown turd rounds out the top five. Qualifier number three, setting a slow, comfortable pace off turn four. Green flag is out. Well, that's what you call a huge jump for Matt Brusso in the 26. The inside line opens up. Josh LeClaire is going to bring the seven car into the number two spot. Speedy Brissett in the 0-3 will look to follow him through. Brandon Atkins trying to fight right back on the outside in the 199. Three wide action down the front stretch into turn one. They close the gap on the Brusso 26. Yellow flag is out as the 41 of LaFountain has the third spun. and final qualifier for the mini modifieds. Another slow pace off turn four. It's time to go. On the outside, Josh LeClaire in the seven, zooming by. He will take the lead into turn three, dropping Brusso back to second. As Speedy starts to move up on the outside in the zero three. They'll battle side by side. And now Speedy moves into second, and he will look quickly to the inside of the seven. Speedy Brissett on the inside, Josh LeClaire on the outside. They race together up the back stretch. LeClaire sticks his nose in front. Brissett coming right back on the inside off turn four. They are halfway. Speedy Brissett now by a car length and a half as Josh LeClaire is back to second. Keep an eye on that four car. Chris LeVere is on the move into the number three spot. LeVere picking him up and setting him down as he puts Brusso back to fourth. Two to go. LeVere continuing to close in on the seven of Josh LeClaire. He's just a car length behind now as they race into turn three. Speedy has opened up a couple of car lengths on this battle for the number two spot. White flag is coming out. Speedy Brissett looking strong up front in the 0-3. Here comes LeVere on the inside of the seven car, and Chris will take second. 
off the back stretch the final time. Speedy Brissett in the 0 3 will lead the pack off turn four. Checkered flag is in the air. Your winner is Speedy. Chris LeVere gets second, third spot to Josh LeClaire, Matt Brousseau fourth, and Shotgun Seymour. Number six, Chad Provost in car six will start seventh. Seven cars to run in this first qualifier for the Virtual Trailer Sales Renegades, who are under green. Franklin in the 69, the eight for Brissett. Franklin leads off turn two as he drifts up the racetrack. Brissett had to get on the brakes a little bit. Joe Warren, the 13, trying to move up on the inside as they race side by side for that second spot. Whoa, whoa, the eight, little wobbly, going into turn number four. The 13, faster goes six. Black flag out for the 16 of Hanson. Joe Warren closing in on Don Franklin in that number 69. Lonnie Rivers closing in on Joe Warren. The seven for Lonnie Rivers goes to the outside and turns three and four. Warren continues to run the inside. And he'll follow Don Franklin down the As Franklin works a middle line around the track with a 69, giving a lot of room to the 13 who can't quite get to that inside position. Now here comes number seven, looking to the inside again of the 13 car. Rivers not able to get to that spot. Franklin in the 69, leads by two car lengths, pulls away off turn number two. Down the back stretch, he opens it up to three car lengths, almost four over the 13 of Warren. Lonnie Rivers still running in that third spot. We've talked about now the last couple of weeks. That number six car is as fast as anybody in the division right now. Chad Provost in the six, running in fourth, but going after his teammate, Lonnie Rivers, for the third position. And it's Don Brissett in the eighth, and Mark Karen in car five. There goes Provost, hot, and it turns three and four. Had to get on the brakes as he drifted up the track. And he actually walked into the seven car. You know, they'll now follow Lonnie around. The 69 of Franklin showing the way. The 13 of Warren still running second, feeling the heat of Lonnie Rivers. But Rivers has not really been able to get to a position to challenge for that second spot. And it's a fire for the Renegades. At the same time out front, Joe Warren, the 13, has been running two to three to four car lengths off the back bumper of Franklin. Well, now here comes Lonnie Rivers again in a turn three, but you can see the brake smoke because he had to get on the binders pretty heavy to keep from making contact. White flag is out. Don Franklin with a number 69. On his way to a green to checkers victory. If he can hold on through turns three and four. Here he is working the car through the middle of the racetrack, a line that has worked throughout. Down to the checkered flag, Don Franklin wins. Chad Provost fourth, Ben Warren fire number two for the Renegades. Dan Dubuque in the 61, Bob Dragoon in the 36. Ready to bring him down to the stripe. There's the green flag. Keith Pelkey in the 24, Rob Favreau in the 27. Robert Gordon's in the H2O. The 25 is for Kevin Booten, the 11 for Lance Raptoy, and the 10 for Josh Allen. Some good drivers in this qualifier. Look at Rob Favreau make a three wide move. He's the meat in the sandwich trying to work his way towards the front. Bob Drago, 74 years young, driving that 36 car, sliding to the back of the pack. Out front, Dan Dubuque in the 61, but he is being sized up, and a car is looking to pass to the inside and on the outside. On the outside, it's Keith Pelkey with the 24. On the inside, it's Robert Gordon with the H2O. Pelkey goes right up against the third. It was still Dubuque at the stripe. But Gordon's got room on the inside into turn number two. Hey, how about three wide racing for the lead? That always makes for good fun. Rob Favreau trying to bump draft down the back stretch, give him a little push. Robert Gordon on the inside is going to take the lead. The 24 of Pelkey had to get on the brakes as the 61 drifted up the track. Danny Buke runs in that second spot. Rob Favreau in the 27 running third. Lance Raptoy, who is the point leader in this division with his car number 11, running in the fourth spot. There goes Favreau to the outside of Dubuque, 61 car for the second spot. They work the middle and top of the track, almost right up against the Favreau to go the 61 loose, is plowing up the track and almost collected the 27, pushing him up into the wall. 
Lance Raptoy was able to work on the inside. He goes to second. Here comes the 25 of Booten on the inside. He goes to third. Dan Dubuque of the 61, again, washing up the racetrack. And that inside line is the place to be if you're going to try to get past the because Danny's having a tough time keeping that car down on the inside of the track. Rob Favreau in the 27 and the 24 of Keith Pelkey racing three wide for the fourth spot. Favreau eventually grabs it on the inside. Battle for second. Booten in the 25. And Raptoy in the 11. Robert Gordon has a sizable lead out front. Good racing for the second position between point leader Lance Raptoy, who has just a three point lead over the two time defending track champ Lonnie Rivers. Kevin Booten in the 25 is the third place point man. He's 22 points out of the top spot. He's trying to pass the point leader in the qualifiers. They continue to run side by side for the second position. Over in turn number two, Raptoy sticks the nose back out in front for that second spot. Well, there's no doubt who's going to win this one. It's the H2O for Robert Ford to get the victory. But the battle for second continues. They'll race down to the stripe for second. And at the stripe, it is the 11 of Lance Raptoy by inches. 25 of Ford finishes third. And Rob Favre. Metalman. That's the field. Seven cars. Green flag. It would figure that the one of Benoit could be tough to beat in this qualifier. Last week, he particularly liked to run right on the top of the racetrack as he goes around Roger Labonte with a 60. Keith O'Neill, the zero, has the lead. They run side by side, door to door for the second spot. Terry in the 43, the 23 Raptoid. Right behind them, it's the one of Benoit, who is closing in, following by the 21 of Raptoy as they work around the outside of Josh Terry's number 43. Leader is Keith O'Neill in the zero. Dave Raptoy running in the second spot. Benoit goes to third with the one. Fourth is the 43 of Josh Terry. Fifth is the 60. That is Roger Labounty. And then a gap back to the three car of Dave Drake. And pulling, uh, seeing the field, as Rick often says, is the two for Metalman. See them all. Keith O'Neill with the zero, leading by a car wing. Near the top of the track, Dave Raptoy in the 21, working down on the inside, making a bid for the lead. O'Neill is able to hold him off. Closing in is the one of Cody Benoit. Here comes Raptoy in the 21 to the inside as they drag race down the front stretch. And the stripe is almost dead even. If I had to guess, I'd say the 21 by inches, but the zero had momentum in the stripe. The car with momentum now is Benoit's one to the inside, down the back stretch into three. The one of Cody Benoit takes the lead away from the 21 and the zero. And he will start to pull away down the front stretch going into the first turn. Cody Benoit is the leader. Dave Raptoy running in second. Third is Keith O'Neill, the zero. Josh Terry runs fourth with a 43. Fifth, Roger Labonte with a 60. Keith O'Neill had to get on the brakes. You can see that rear end starting to slide out into three and four. Cody Benoit leads, Dave Raptoy trying to hang. Oh, O'Neill just clipped the tire. You can see the left front is broken. He clipped the big white tire over in turn number two, and that snapped the left front. White flag out for Cody Benoit. Dave Raptoy trying to hang with him white right on the back bumper down the back stretch they race it at turn number three benoit on the outside raptoy on the inside here comes the 21 trying to work through drag race for the checkered flag down to the stripe it's benoit by four feet second to raptoy third to josh terry fourth to the 60 of roger labounty fifth to dave Drake, sixth to uh, john michael Brissett in the 14 josh laporte in the 45 april bordeaux in the 23 bill joyle senior in the 58 mike whalen in the 11 Steve LaFort in the 55, Chris Collin in the 68 is Rob Sign. Collins gets the jump, leads him up the back stretch. Here comes Josh LaFort quickly on the outside to challenge. Bill Joyle Sr. is on the move fast, as is the 11 of Mike Whalen. They're three wide in a turn three. They're side by side in a turn four. At the stripe, it's LaFort by just a nose. Collins trying to come right back on the inside. They race together off turn two. John Michael Brissett moving up quickly in the 14 car. 
he is going to take that second spot away from Collins, although Collins will battle right back on the inside. Josh Laporte is your leader. Jacob Brissett is now second. Jack Collins, though, sticking right with him. They're both going to lose a spot. As here comes Whalen moving up on the inside. Mike Whalen in the 11 looks to take that number two spot away. He's right alongside the 14 of Brissett. Up front, it's Josh Laporte. Pulling away from the battle for the number two spot. Now has been won by the 11 of Mike Whalen. Brissett back to third. Collins is fourth. Joyle Sr. runs in the fifth spot. Porto is sixth. Two to go. Whalen starts to close the gap just a bit. It's down to a car like the advantage as they come off turn four. The white flag is out. Laporte in the 45, Whalen in the 11. It's a good gap back to the third spot. Levant, the 14 of John Michael Brissett has that. Collins is fourth. Off turn four, final time. Josh Laporte holds on to win it all. Mike Whalen gets second. Third spot to John Michael Brissett. Chad Collins finishes fourth. And fifth spot goes to the 58 of Bill Joyle Sr. That's going to wrap up qualifying for the 68 Monster. for Jamie Atkins. He is from Osable Forks. And shotgun on the field, Chris Frenier in the 93. All right, 25 laps the distance. Here we go. Green flag. Field races off in a turn number one. Drivers along the back stretch. It's running side by side, right on back through the field. Out front, it's the 33 of Bruno on the outside. It is the 29 of Ben Huff as they race off turn number four. At the stripe, Ben Huff had the lead from the outside. He gets the car down to the inside of the racetrack and he starts to pull away from Travis Bruno who runs second. Here comes Bill Sawyer to the outside. Sawyer flying towards the front. Sawyer in the 39 as they box it up. Look up, uh, look out rather. Several cars over at turns three and four and again on the binders. You can see brake smoke coming off of several cars. John Duquette in the 18, the 44 of Tyler Terry. Sheet metal of the 44 hanging off the back. Jamie Bigor with a 19 running right off of his back bumper. Out front, Ben Huff shows the way, but closing in is the 39 of Bill Sawyer. As they race off the fourth turn, Huff sideways off turn number four. Huff was able to hang on to the race car. Might have had some help making him sideways off the fourth turn. Sawyer running second. Third is the 69 of Billy Twaits. Fourth is the 33 for Bruno. Fifth on the outside is the 11 of Bushy, but here comes Sean Duquette after him for that fifth spot on the inside. Ben Huff's lead is two car lengths off the second turn. Sean Duquette in the 18, trying to hang on to his position. The 11 of Jimmy Bushy works just in front of him on the outside, and Tyler Terry also uses the outside right up against the wall, trying to take away a spot. The yellow flag is out. We've got a car that has spun on the inside of the fourth turn. It looks like it might be the 56. All right, ready to run again. Five laps complete. Here they come off turn number four. Green flag. Sawyer from the outside trying to get it done. Ben Huff on the inside trying to, oh, Huff is off the pace. This is a mess off the top of turn number two. The 29 lost power coming off the second turn. All right, here they come off turn four. Green flag. Racing out front, Bill Sawyer has the lead. Jim Bushy runs second. Jamie Begor, who worked so well last week on the inside, trying to take that second spot away. Look at Robin Wood move on the inside. Buck O'Brien runs door to door with him, racing for the fourth spot. Jamie, Jamie Begor goes to second. Look out! Up on his roof, the 77 of Rick Frenier sliding up towards turn number one. Red flag is out. Contact along the front stretch. The 77 of Rick Frenier ended up on his roof.
sliding down the front stretch up towards turn number one. And that brings out the red flag as the safety crew quickly over to Rick Frenier. 25, 19 laps from eight. Here they come off of turn number four, down the front stretch, green flag. See a little bobble from the 39 as he hit the hammer. The 19 of Beagle runs right with him, even at a two. The 19 surges off the top of turn number two. He has the lead in the middle of the back stretch. Beagle and the 19 works on the outside. Here comes Branham with him. Branham to the outside of Sawyer. Beagle to the outside of Sawyer. They race down the front stretch. It's Jamie Beagle to the front. Beagle has the lead. Second is Sawyer in the 39. There goes Twaits around with a 69 right into the infield. Beagle now Branham on the outside. Branham to the second spot, working the top of the racetrack. Bucko Branham to second. That's how they finished last week. Jamie Beagle won. Bucko Branham finished second. Tyler Terry was able to race to third last week, but Terry is towards the back of the pack. Sawyer running third, Robin Wood running fourth. Here comes Wood to the inside to get to the top three. Top three point guys run in the top three. Third place point man, Jamie B. Gore is the leader. Point leader, Buck O'Branham runs second. Second place point man, Robin Wood runs third. Bill Sawyer is fourth. Fifth is Jim Bushy. Sixth is Nick Lagoy. Running in seventh, Sean Duquette. Eighth is Howard Stoner. Ninth is Dan Sullivan. And tenth is Nick Haywood with a 29. B. Gore's lead is two car lengths. Branham closes into three and four, narrows it down to a car length. Working off the top of turn four, Jamie B. Gore's car maintains that car length advantage, but Branham lurks right off the back bumper. B. Gore with a little bobble of two, but he maintains the half car length advantage down the back stretch into three and four. This time by, it's halfway for Jamie Begor. Bucko Branham trying to get to the inside, trying to size up the 19, figuring out, plotting a strategy to try to take the lead away from the 19 car. Branham got a real good run that time off of turn number two. Begor, you can see a little checkup off the second turn. Not sure that car is running as effectively or maybe as hooked up as it was for him last week. Last week, we saw Jamie run extremely well down on the bottom. This week, he's back to that more conventional line, working the middle and top of the racetrack. Begor leads, closing in is Robin Wood on the battle between the top two drivers. Again, Bucko Branham back to the inside of Jamie Begor, but Begor is able to hold him off. Branham was able to build up some momentum to the inside, but Begor off the top of the track, got a little push from the progressive banking. Black flag was out for the 93 of Chris Frenier. Here comes Buck O'Branham again. Three and four is where he makes up ground. At the stripe, it's Begor by just a couple of feet. Buck O'Branham on the inside has the lead over in turn number two. Here comes Begor back after him on the outside. Robin Wood is in the mix as well with the 61. They're even into the third turn. Here's where Branham's been hooked. Down on the inside, the 20 car along the front stretch. Drag race for the lead. At the stripe, it's Begor by inches. Jamie Begor hanging on to the lead. There's a slower car in front of them that they are quickly approaching. That's the Atkins 68. He could factor into this side-by-side -side battle. Let's see what line the 68 chooses. Branham on the inside with a 20. The 19 of Begor working at his door. Down to the stripe, Branham this time has the lead by two feet. Atkins in the 68 stays down on the inside. Branham in the 20 tries to get around him to work in the middle line. Begor works the rim of the racetrack. Down in a turn number three, Branham has the lead. Begor tries to come back after him on the outside. Let's see if Branham can clear him along the front stretch. He will. Bucko Branham has the lead with a 20. Here comes Robin Wood to the inside of Begor now for the second spot. Branham has the lead. Robin Wood trying to take second away off of third number two. He's got the nose in that second spot. Jamie Begor falling back to third. So it's now Bucko Branham, the point leader. Second place point man Robin Wood is second. Third place point man Jamie Begor runs third. In the fourth spot, it's Jim Bushy. Fifth is Bill Sawyer. Sixth is still Nick Lagoy. Right on his back bumper is Sean Duquette in the number 18. He runs seventh. Eighth is Nick Haywood in the 29. Ninth, I believe, is Howard Stoner in the 57. Tenth would be Danny Sullivan in the three. Five laps to go for Bucko Branham. Branham races off into one and two. Robin Wood runs a half car length, now a full car length off of his back bumper down the back stretch. 
Extending the lead to almost two car lengths was Branham that time into three and four. Jamie Bevor falling back behind the top two cars. Lap 21 goes up on the scoreboard. Branham looking for his fourth win of the season. So is Robin Wood. Wood in that second spot. Still a car length and a half to two off of the back bumper of the 20. 385 points for Branham, 382 for Robin Wood. And the top two point guys with third place man Jamie Bevor sitting in that third spot. He's just 13 points out of the top position. Popsicle sticks are out. This time by two laps to go for Bucko Branham. Two to go. He is maintaining that two car length advantage over Robin Wood. Robin working strong on the inside. Bucko using a uh, middle line around the racetrack, actually taking it right down to the inside, this time in three and four, protecting that middle line. And then taking it out to the middle along the front stretch. White flag out for Branham. Slower cars in front, not sure if they'll play a factor. They're down on the inside, white flag out. Branham's lead is a car length into three and four. We got a spin along the front stretch. Here comes the field off of turn number four. And the yellow flag, the caution has been called. The yellow flag is green flag in one hand, white flag in the other hand. Here comes the field, slowly through four, on the hammer, down the front stretch, green and white flags are out, one lap to go. Robin Wood going after him on the outside. Here comes Wood with a 61, trying to draw even down the back stretch. Buck O'Branham has the lead, half car length, into three and four. Wood trying to catch up on the outside. Branham's right down on the inside. Drag race for the win. Down to the stripe. It's Branham by three feet. Wood second, Bevor third, Bushy fourth, Sawyer fifth. This will be a reversal of a photo finish earlier in the season in which Robin Wood picked up the victory. Someone forgot to tell Bucko the burnout contest was next week. For the racing veteran from Plattsburgh, he's the point leader. He'll increase his lead by four points over Robin Wood. Out of his car, everybody. Give a nice round of applause. Buck O'Brannum in car number 20 with his fourth victory of the season. Okay, Bucko. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Ron, to get a little extra cash. All right, come on over this way so Gene can see you as well. First of all, let's talk about the pass for the lead of Jamie Bigor. Looks like you were trying to size him up for a few laps and uh, try to pick your spot. Yeah, he was, he's been real good the last couple of weeks. I mean, uh, they picked up their game quite a bit. Uh, but he looked like it was a little tight off, so I just let him get out there a little bit, and I just tried to re reeling them in. But, boy, it was tough getting by him, though. I didn't want to. Well, I know we slammed doors coming down the front stretch, but, you know, that's, that's typical racing. As long as we didn't do it in the corners, you know. And then talk about with the uh, last lap restart, uh, green-white coming out, racing for the checkers. Talk about what was going through your mind on that final lap. Well, I know Robin's real good on restarts, uh, real good. So I had to play the game, and uh, he almost got me again. But, I mean, he's real good on restarts, and I'm glad I came out ahead. And you had to get on the hammer, especially working down on the inside, coming off that fourth turn, and hope that it really picked up for you, and it certainly did uh, by the clock upstairs, the AMB scoring three one-thousandths of a second. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, we tried something unorthodox tonight with our car, and boy, did it work. I mean, I mean, we tried some weird stuff. I don't think everybody tries weird stuff as we do, and uh, it worked. It worked. Well, the weird stuff gets you to victory lane. Congratulations, win number four. Yeah, I'd like to thank Liquor and Wine Warehouse and uh, Bud Light and Burger King and Lake Champlain Ruff and everybody that helps me out. Uh, Daniel Signs especially. They put vinyl in my car every week. I uh, just appreciate everything. All right, that's Buck O'Branham, everybody. Give him a nice round of applause as he gets his fourth win of the racing season. Field will now assemble four wide around the racetrack. In the honor of our track photographer, Mike Watts,
four wide around the big A in honor of Mike. Twenty-seven modifieds ready to run. Thirty laps, the twenty-nine laps the distance tonight. Again, in honor of Mike Watts. Twenty-nine laps the distance. Great flag. Box it up into turn number one. There goes Pat McGrail the ten. McGrail off the pace, flying off the top of turn number two. We got cars spinning all over the place in the middle of backstretch, going into turn number three. Yellow flag is out. Jason Durgan sideways. I believe somehow Pat Dupree was able to snake his Pretty way fast. through that in qualifier. Okay, ready to roll again. Here comes the field off turn number four. Green flag. Jason Bruno in the 623 leads the field off turn two. You're not seeing double. The 26 is Todd Ormsby. The 26P is Mike Finney. Three wide, racing for about the eighth spot. On the inside, Martin Bob. In the middle was Vince Quinville. On the outside, it's Patrick Dupree. Roll reversal. Usually it's the 90 on the rim and the 24 on the inside. Tonight, it's the opposite. It's the 90 on the inside, the 24 on the rim. Out front, 623 Bruno. 26 Orsby, 26 P. Finney. Running fourth, Woodruff in the 55. Then it's Real in the 02, the one of Bertio. Martin was gone to the outside. Vince Quinville to the inside. Three wide to three. Oh, man, the 78 slides through. The 90 works the rim around. Sliding back the 02 of Riel. What a move by Vince Quinville. Quinville down to the inside of Bertio. Look at the 90. Oh, they touch. Look out. The 90 hard into the jersey barrier. Martin Waugh headed right toward the billboards. Got a big piece of the jersey barrier as he worked to the outside of the one of Bertio. Bertillon drifted up the track. The 90 went flying off the top of the racetrack at full speed. He had no place to go. I don't think Bertillon assumed that he would be at his door. Bertillon drifted up. It was a great move on the inside by Quenville in the 78. Quenville went three wide around. Oh, Martin Watt out of his car. He's after Bertillon. He's running after Bertillon. Not happy with the one who pushed him right up off the top of the racetrack. Officials over there to restrain the 90. Six remain. Remember, just 29 laps tonight. The race will end on the white flag lap in honor of Mike Watts. Here they come. Green flag. Jason Bruno with a 623, leading him off to down the back stretch. Second spot, Todd Orsi with a 26. Vince Quinville flying along with a 78, trying to hang with the 24. The pistol Patrick Dupree, and he's hanging right with him, all right. Right now, he's sitting in that fifth spot. Bruno leads. Ormsby runs second. 55 of Matt Woodruff to third. Here comes Quinville to the inside of Mike Finney. They're working three wide. Oh, they touch! Mike Finney in the 26. P off the pace. And Quinville's going to problem with the rear end as well. Yellow flag. Driver's right on the hammer. Here they come off turn number four. Green flag! Todd Ormsby from the outside going for the lead. Patrick Dupree going right with him on the outside. Dupree goes to second. Bruno back to third. Dupree looked inside for the lead. Ormsby holds him off. Dupree running in the second spot. Third is Woodruff. Bruno back to fourth. Working right up against the wall. Mike Riel with a CO2. Here comes Michelle Vienne looking underneath for the fifth spot. Michelle Vienne and Mike Riel run wheel to wheel for the fifth position. Right behind them is Aaron Bartomey. Here comes Craig Reel in the CO2 trying to get underneath Bartimi. Good racing for spots four on back. Wheel to wheel, side by side. Now Michel Vienne is able to clear Bruno into that fourth spot. Bruno under the gun, racing for fifth. Here comes Mike Reel underneath with a 0-2. Out front, Todd Ormsby, feeling the heat from Patrick Dupree, sizing him up, trying to find the spot to make the pass. He's got all kinds of time. He's right off the back bumper. 
And I think Dupree is just trying to find the spot. Oh, Chris K.A. breaks with the 18. K.A. parked over in turn number two. Let's see if he can make it to the exit ramp. He will, he is headed back to the garage here. Last week's winner breaks. Chris K.A.'s night, over. Todd Orsby's lead is a car length. Patrick Dupree, I think, is just running off the back bumper, and he's just fighting time. Perhaps Orsby will prove me wrong. Nine laps down, 20 laps remain. Matt Woodruff running third, fourth is Michel Vien. Fifth, Mike Riel. Sixth is Craig Riel. Seventh is Aaron Barnaby. Eighth is Brian Grimm. Ninth is Craig Atkins. Tenth, Jason Bruno. Here comes Chad Blair running for the 11th spot to the inside of Richard Tesser. He'll grab 11. Tesser slowing in the 49. He's back to 12th. Don Scarborough trying to take that away from him with the 11th car. Dupree looks to the outside of Orsby before the lead. Over in turns three and four. Here comes Orsby along the front stretch. Dupree to the outside trying to draw even. They are just about even into one and two. Patrick Dupree works the river on the outside. There he goes for the lead. Yellow flag is out. Cars had spun over in turn number four. Laps complete. They're on the hammer coming off of turn number four. Green flag. Dupree drives around the outside in turn number one. Taking the lead, trying to pull away off the top of turn two. He does. Second Orsby. Third Woodruff. Fourth Craig Riel. Fifth Bryant Trim. Patrick Dupree pulling away on his way to win number five. Bryant Trim goes into the top five. Excellent job by Trim to get into the top five after he started in the 16th position. Make that 18th. Bryant Trim started 18th. He is up to fifth. He's gained 13 spots and 14 laps. Halfway home for Patrick Dupree. And for Dupree not to win, it would take an act of the New York State Legislature. And you know how quickly they act lately. Second, third, Woodruff. Fourth, Craig Riel. Feeling the heat from Brian Trim, who's looking on the outside for that fist fight. Sixth, Jason Durgan. Durgan has really, he started 22nd. Durgan has picked up 16 positions from 22nd to 6th. Seventh is Mike Riel. Eighth is Aaron Barnaby. Running ninth, Greg Atkins. Running into the top 10 now, Don Scarborough from dead last after he was involved in the first mishap. Scarborough has gone from about 25th to 10th. He's gained 15 spots. So several drivers have worked their way towards the front. Here comes Dupree off number four. His lead now. Half the front street. Dan Brown in the 40. Backwards into the infield. That's going to bring out a yellow flag. Yellow flag out for the Turnbull Coils 40 car. All right, ready to run again. Here comes Dupree off of four. Green flag. Aaron Barnaby looking outside Mike Riel, racing for position. Jason Durgan looks to the outside of Brian Trim, trying to get in the top five. Durgan goes to the outside of Trim. He's got fifth. Durgan looks to the outside of Riel, now down to the inside as he gets around Brian Trim. Jason Durgan, what a charge towards the front. That 17 machine is hooked, and he is moving. Durgan around Craig Rio. He's to fourth. Jason Durgan sizing up the 55 of Matt Woodruff. Here comes Trim around the 0-2 trying to get there. 
out front, it's Patrick Dupree. Don Scarborough's looking outside. He's trying to get a spot away from Michel Viet. The leader is Dupree. Todd Horsby runs second. He's five car lengths behind him. Running in third, Matt Woodruff. Fourth is Jason Durgan. Fifth is Greg Rio. How much is left in those tires for Durgan? He has worked those tires hard trying to get to the front. He's fourth. He's got something left, but how much? Going after the 55 on the outside now. Here comes Durgan. Lap 25 goes up on the board. Durgan goes around Woodruff, who slows. Woodruff is off the pace with a 55. He's falling backwards. Jason Durgan goes to third with a 17. Matt Woodruff is off the pace with the double nickel, flipping around the racetrack, falling to the back of the pack. If a yellow were to come out right now, Durgan could perhaps make this interesting. To a friend of the racers, the fans, and one of the biggest supporters of this racetrack, Mike Watts. The Watts family, everybody. And now, everyone, Andy Watts is going to uh, share some thoughts with all of you. Andy? I'd just like to thank everybody, uh, all the staff, all the racers, all the fans. You've all been great. Uh, you've made this difficult time a little bit easier for us. Uh, we're all great. We're grateful for everything that all of you have done, all the cards, all the messages, uh, all these great displays. Thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. And now we'll bring our top three finishers around. And we'll have a word with uh, those drivers in just a moment. Out to climb out from his machine. All right, here he comes out of his car. But give him a nice round of applause. The pistol, Patrick Dupree, gets it done again. Pat, congratulations. I'll tell you, the first five laps were a little bit hairy. Tell me uh, from your vantage point uh, what you were experiencing. There was a lot more than five laps that were hairy in that race. But, uh, um, you know, it's a real honor to, uh, to do as good as we did tonight and uh, get this win for the Watts' family and uh, dedicate it to them and to Mike. He was a really great guy and a good friend of mine, and uh, he'll definitely be missed. So this is pretty cool. Pat, you ran in second for a lot of laps behind Todd Ormsby. It looked like you were trying to just size him up and figure out when it was time for you to make the move. Yeah, it probably looked like that, but I was actually pushing pretty bad at that point. I uh, made a little bit of a pan hard adjustment, and the longer uh, the car went, the more heat got in the tires, the better it got. So I knew it was kind of a matter of time, and uh, you know, starting on the outside was, was a pretty big bonus. So, But um, he was pretty quick, and uh, I was just kind of happy to survive after uh, the first few wrecks that seemed to be happening all around me. Congratulations, victory number five. Yes, thank you very much. Patrick Dupree, everybody. He gets his fifth win. And now outside in Bordeaux on the outside. They start to pick it up as they come off turn four. We are under green. It's a good even start. Bruce on the inside, the turn on the outside. 
Here comes Bobby Lavera on the move to take that third spot. Seymour got a little bit squirrely in the 357, but he holds on to it. Four wide in a turn three. Look at the fountain split the middle. He's all the way up to the number four spot. The brown turn trying to go to the front of the outside. We got a car in the wall. It's the 37 of David Perrin. Caution flag is out. Eight eight five four zero four eight eight. That's a blue ticket. Rick. Here they come. One down. Twenty nine to go. Back to the green. This time it's Bordeaux on the inside and Brusso on the outside. Now we've got Collins spinning the zero two. Donor just narrowly gets by on the inside. Terry Bichon not as fortunate. Nor is the zero seven of Rick Woodruff. 29 still to go, believe it or not. Bordeaux on the inside, Brusso on the outside. The bees come to the green flag. And it's a good jump for the Brown turn. He leads him up the back stretch. Here comes LaFountain looking for possibly another middle move as they go into turn three. No, the hole is not big enough. He'll settle into that number four spot. But he's got a challenge from Seymour right there on the inside. What got a little bit of a wobble from the eight car. He's going to lose a lot of ground, and oh, there goes the turn in the bunker again. The turn ends up in the kitty litter. He's trying to get it refired, and will stay great. Look who's got the lead drop. Jamie LaFountain in the 20. Bobby LaVere back to second. Three wide action again into turn three. Oh, LaVere just slams the back end of the 20, trying to get him loose. Didn't work. Nice job by Jamie to hold on. The lead is bigger. Well, that backfired on the five. Well, I think he got on the binders and got himself loose. He was headed up towards the turn four wall. He made a good save in that five car. Here comes Chris LeVere in the middle. He's going to move into the number three spot. LeVere high again, coming off turn four. Mishandling number five. He's going to drop him back to the number three spot as here comes his brother looking at the inside. In the meantime, look who's driven away. The Fountain leads it by 10 car lengths. Ninety-five of Donor, the fifty-nine of Stone Cold, trying to find a way through. We've got Lavera off in the bunker on the back stretch. Here comes Stone Cold looking to the inside of the Seymour car. He's going to get by. Donor will look to move through as well on the inside. Up front, Jamie LaFountain has said goodbye. Chris LeVere is second. Bobby LeVere is third. Steven Brissett runs in the fourth spot. Matt Brusso fifth. Rick Donor now sixth. Good battle for seventh. That's Kurt Seymour in the 375. Josh LeClaire in the eighth. In the seven, rather. And the 03 of Speedy Brissett and the 11 of Jim Varno. You can throw a blanket on those four cars. Lavere has reeled in the 20. Lead down to a car length and a half as they head into turn three. They'll complete lap 10 this time by 20 laps remain for the minis. Still, Jamie LaFountain in the 20. Chris LeVair running one, two. The third and fourth place cars are starting to close that gap. Stone Cold is in the third, and Captain Thunder is fourth. Bobby LeVair is back to fifth. Eric Riel brings the deuce back to the garage area. Now LaFountain has opened up ground once again. That lead is back to another six or seven car lengths. 
Brandon Atkins brings the 199 to the infield. Perhaps there are still shifting issues on that four car, Rob. Well, it's almost like the Jaws theme should be playing because the 59 and the 95 are closing in. And the four is off the pace in turn one, Rick. He slowed down again, going into one. And now he's back up to speed. He's got Stone Cold Steve Brissett to his inside. They run together to battle for the number two spot. As the Mini Modifieds will be halfway next time by. And still Jamie LaFountain playing catch me if you can. Set second, Donor has moved to third. Lavera is back to fourth again. He slows in the back stretch. He is just losing ground to the leaders as the shifting problem continues on that four car. Now we'll see what Jamie LaFountain's got for the 59 and the 95. Nobody between them. And we're just past the halfway point. If this had been a regular Saturday night, Jamie LaFountain would be your winner. It's not. He's looking awfully strong up front, and he's maintaining his lead on arguably the two fastest cars in the division. Brissett second in the 59. Rick Donor third in the 95. Chris LeVere is back to fourth. Bobby LeVere is fifth. Speedy Brissett runs sixth in the 0-3. Matt Brusso is seventh. A caution fly coming out on the speedway. A problem in turn four. LaFountain starts to pick the pace up as they come into turn four. Back to the green. Good restart for the Fountain. He sort of snook it to 59. Here comes Donor to look to the outside. Donor to challenge Stone Cold up the back stretch. Here comes Speedy. Speedy Brissett looks to the inside of Bobby LeVere. They battle for the number four spot. Brissett and Donor run side by side for that number two spot. Jamie LaFountain's got to love that. As long as those two are battling as hard as they are, they're not going to be able to get by that 20 car. There'll be 10 laps to go as they pass the start finish line. They'll complete lap number 20. The fountain leads the way. Stone Cold is second. Yellow flag out. We got a car off in turn two. That's the Tim LaFountain, number 41. 19 down, 11 remain. LaFountain leads him to the green flag. This time a better start for the 59. Right on the back bumpers, they hit the start finish line. Here comes Stone Cold. He's going to look to the inside as they go into turn three. But Fountain holds him off. He's got a half a car length advantage. 59's on the bottom of the racetrack. Can he work it? Yes, he can. Fountain leads the lap. Now he's going to try to get back to the bottom of the racetrack. The 59 is still right there, though. They head up the back stretch. The Fountain on the outside, Brissett on the inside. They remain together into turn three and off turn four. Jamie LaFountain making it work on the outside like another number 20 does here at Airborne Speedway. But the 59 hanging real tough on the inside and Rick Donor has a great view. Leader. Stone Cold Steve Brissett takes the lead up the back stretch. The Fountain is back to second. 
And here comes the captain now in the bottom of the racetrack, trying to take that number two spot away. Fountain comes back for more on the inside. He's got the lead. Jamie LaFound comes right back and takes the lead. And he brings Donor right along with him. Brissett is back to third. Holy cow. Now Donor swings the 95 to the outside. Speedy Brissett has gained on these top three cars. He's now within shouting distance. Donor's right alongside. They'll move around the lap car of the 41. Let's see what happens here. 41 stays to the bottom. Donor on the outside, sticks the nose in front. With five to go, Rick Donor had his nose in front of the line, but the fountain coming right back on the inside. Rick Donor on the outside, Jamie LaFountain on the inside, and a ding-dong battle for the top spot. Contact on the front stretch. LaFountain is sideways. Donor's got the lead. Speedy Brissett pulls alongside. This is 59 of Stone Cold. Now LaFountain trying to come back after the 95. Donor, your leader. LaFountain second. Brissette third. Brissette fourth. Fifth spot. That's a battle between Laver and Seymour. Two to go this time by. And Captain Thunder has got the lead. Jimmy LaFountain giving it his all. Car spinning in turn two. It's the 37. Will this bring out a caution? Not yet, 37 still running, will stay green. White flag is out. Up the back stretch the final time. Rick Doner, half a lap away from 350 bucks. Jamie LaFountain looking to take one last shot as they come off turn four. Not gonna be enough, Doner wins it. LaFountain will be second. Brissett finishes third, Brissett finishes fourth, and fifth spot will go at the line to 357. That is Curtis Seymour. So after a tough start, this mini modified finish turns out to be. Rob is on his way down to victory lane. He'll have a chat with the captain. Rick unbuckling, getting on the hat, out of his car now, give a nice round of applause. That's his fifth win with car number 95. And for several laps, you had a real good view of the uh, battle that was going on between the 20 and the 59 right in front of you. Come on over this way just a little bit. How about uh, what you were thinking sitting in third, watching them duke it out for the lead? Well, let them duke it out because I'm just sitting back here waiting for them. <laughs> what do you think about rookie of the year right here? Uh, Jamie LaFountain drove an excellent race, led much of the race, and then you were able to work the outside towards the front. Well, I see his car going away. His ass thing was getting loose, but he was giving me love taps. He was making sure I, was, I knew he was there. Well, you work for this one, Rick, and a little extra cash always helps this time around. Yeah, it, it helps out quite a bit, actually. I want to thank Watson Glass and Gordon Doyle. Thanks, guys. That's Rick Donner. He gets his fifth win of the racing season. Nice job by Rick. The 61 is Dan Dubuque from Plattsburgh. Shotgun on the field from West Jay-Z, Bob Dragoon in the 36. That's the field, here they come on four, green flag. Racing off turn number two, Josh Terry showing the way. Rob Favreau's on the inside, Don Franklin is meat in a sandwich trying to move through to the front. The 60 of Roger Labonte gives him racing room through that middle line. Here comes Franklin, the second. 
than never. Area Mavro is still second. Third is Franklin outside. Fourth, Gordon with the H2O. Fifth, the 25 of Booten. Sixth, Raptor in the 21. Seventh is car one for Cody Benoit. Eighth is Joe Ward in the 13th. Ninth, Lance Raptor in the 11th. Tenth, Labani in the 60th. Back to 11th for Lonnie Rivers with car seven. Josh Terry leads by about five feet over Rob Favreau with a 27. Favreau looks to the inside as Terry rolls the higher line down the front stretch. Robert Gordon runs behind in third. Fourth, Franklin side by side for fifth. Benoit looking at a third line around the rim. Favreau drawing closer, lap by lap. Looking inside now of Terry along the front stretch of the lead. Had to leave it. Oh, look out! Favreau was bad. Let's go to turn number two. 43 was high enough on the outside that he did not get collected. Favreau was able to gather the car, but not until it cost him a spot. Robert Gordon takes second away. Rob Favreau goes back to third. Look at Benoit. Is he going to do it? Is he going to go through that middle? He's trying. Down on the inside is Raptoy. Out on the outside is Booth with a 25. He's trying to squeeze through. In the one car, Cody Benoit trying to make it work and charge to the front. Don Franklin to the 69, running high in front of Kevin Bowen. And now diving down to the inside as Benoit's been able to get past. Franklin sliding back a spot. Lance Raptoy trying to get in on that action as well. Here comes Robert Gordon. Right by a foot. Lance Raptoy in the 11 might have had a little pass. He collects the car. They race off two down the back stretch, three wide. Lonnie Rivers in the seven, second place point man. Lance Raptoy, point leader in the 11. Raptoy had to get on the binders as the yellow flag comes out. All right, slow pace as they get ready for a restart. 25 laps the distance for the Renegades tonight. Here they come off of turn number four, three flag. Kevin Booten trying to get back to the door of Benoit with a one, see if he can box him and not allow him to get to the outside. As that inside line box down a little bit, now they're rolling. Terry trying to hang on to lead. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. It's going to be Robert Gordon. Right. Gordon's got the lead. Second is Terry. Dave Raptoy in the 21, peeking inside. He's got the nose there. Here comes Dave Raptoy for the second spot. Rob Favreau's thinking three wide action. Three wide as they race into turn number four. Dave Raptoy's on the inside. Cody Benoit's gone down there. And he's going to drive that third. Rob Favreau with a 27 still has third. But Cody Benoit's got the inside line. Now the back stretch into turn number three. Rob Favreau still sitting third. Cody Benoit is fourth. Oh, Lance Raptoy's off the pace with the 11. He's sliding back. Fighting the handle on that 11 car. May have a tire going down, perhaps. Now he's back up to speed, running pretty good speed with that six right next door. That car's been flying the last few weeks. Out front, Robert Gordon, Dave Raptoy second. Here comes Cody Benoit third. Rob Favreau fourth. Fifth, Kevin Boothin. Sixth, John Terry. Seventh, Don Franklin. Eighth, Lonnie Rivers. Ninth, is Chad Provost, and 10th right now is Lance Raptoy, although he's putting up a good fight trying to take that night spot back. Half, halfway, Robert Gordon. Gordon for his first win of the season. Dave Raptoy holding it down second. Cody Benoit third. He's three car lengths behind. Oh, look out, we got cars spinning over there in turn two. The eight. Rivers would be back in front by one lone point. All right, here they come off for green flag. Go time for Dave Raptoy on the outside as he tries to make something happen. The 21 is even down the back stretch into turn number three. Robert Gordon with the H2O puts the nose back in front, going to four. 
They'll come down the front stretch, and it's going to be Robert Ford next. Rob Favreau trying to get to the second spot. Favreau fighting with Dave Raptoy for second. Raptoy gets a good run off the top of turn two. Rob Favreau runs third. Second is the 21 on the outside, but now Favreau trying to come on through the inside. Back with his one car. Rob Favreau sliding off third number two. Got a little loose that time. The 21 goes past, as does the 25. Ten laps to go for Robert Gordon. Side of Don Franklin's car racing for position. Right behind them, good battle between the eight and six. Robert Gordon, Dave Rapsboy, Kevin Putin, Rob Favreau, top four. Coming to fifth is the seven of Lottie Rivers. Sixth is Don Franklin. Seventh is Lance Rapsboy. Eighth is Chad Provost for the sixth car. gets two spots. Don Franklin, excellent job. Hold on to his fifth position. Lonnie Rivers was on his inside, but Rivers could not get that spot away from Franklin in the 69. Fifth, Don Franklin. Sixth, Lonnie Rivers. Chad Provost making some headway on the outside. Provost trying to get that sixth spot away from Rivers. Teammates. Oh, these cars that might have the handle going away a little bit. Cody Benoit goes around. Provost has gone around. And Lance Reptoy has fallen a little bit back behind them. But if they finish like this, Reptoy would still have the point lead. Five but now he's just one position behind the seven. I think Lonnie Rivers is fighting the handle of his car right now. 21 laps showing complete. Here comes Robert Gordon, who is maintaining that car link lead all the way around the racetrack. He's holding it up to two. Gordon, Dave Rapsboy, Kevin Bootin. Those guys have been in the top three. They've separated themselves from Rob Favreau. Favreau has a big gap back to fifth, where Franklin and now Cody Benoit at last, about to take fifth away with two to go. Right, it was nearly even. Lance Rapsboy trying to go around Lonnie Rivers now. If he could do that, he would increase his lead to five. Oh, Rivers got a piece of the 69 of Franklin. Franklin goes around, and that is going to bring out a yellow flag. All right, they pick up the pace. They're on it, coming off of turn number four. Green and white flags are out. One left to go. One left for the victory. Gordon has the lead off turn number two. Dave Raptoy trying to take advantage of the banking down the back stretch. Four wide as they race behind him for third. There goes Benoit on the inside, way up the racetrack, taking a lot of cars up the track with him. Checkered flag is out. Who's gonna win it? Robert Gordon. Dave Raptoy second. Cody Benoit third. Kevin Smith fourth. They look like it.
All right, Robert, Robert Gordon out of his race car. He gets his first win of 2010. Robert Gordon, you're able to hold off Dave Raptoy on that uh, last lap uh, restart, but you led much of the race. This pretty H2O, which looks uh, really good this season, finds its way to victory lane. Yeah, I didn't think a car that looked this good could actually make it this far up, but uh, uh, we've had a little hard time at the beginning of the year. It's been coming in good, a little bad luck here, a little bad luck there, but it's all racing, it's all fun. There was some bumping and banging that went on at times in this feature event, but you managed to steer pretty clear of all that stuff. Yeah, all that just helped me out because I wasn't near it. And, of course, right down the stretch, Dave Raptoy at your door. It's a guy who has a tendency of racing pretty clean as well. You must have felt pretty comfortable with him, at least next to you. Yeah, I do. Inside of me, outside of me, behind me. Uh, it's always good when Dave's near me. I'm happy with that. Well, congratulations finding your way back to Victory Lane. I'd like to thank my sponsors, H2O Well Drilling, Premier Paving, Advanced Energy Solution, Parks Auto, Scooters or Old Burner Service. Uh, got a bunch of sponsors on it this year. Thanks. Nice job, Robert. Thank you. All right, Rob Gordon wins. First win in 2010. Dave Rapp point race. And when the points are on the line, I guess that's one way to look at it. All right, Collins in the 22. JMB in the 14. Here they come off turn four. Green is out. And from the outside, JMB grabs the lead. And he'll lead him up the back stretch. Collins is back to second. Whalen's 11 is on the move. He's going to move into the fourth spot ahead of Joyle Sr. Although Bill battles back, but has to settle into that number five spot. Whalen now looks to the inside of the 23 of Bordeaux. He will move up to third. Dropping Bordeaux back to the number four spot. Up front, it's still JMB, your leader. Here comes Whalen looking to the inside of Collins. They will battle for the number two spot. 15 laps for the Bombers tonight. And Mike Whalen has worked his way into that second spot underneath the 22 of Jack Collins. Now he'll try and reel in the leader. John Michael Brissett. Five car length lead off turn four. And that lead is diminishing. It's down about two car lengths as they head into turn three. A little bobble from the 14. It gets even closer gap as Whalen now has that inside line. He may be able to grab the lead off turn one. We're set on the outside. Whalen on the inside up the back stretch. Still JMB with a nose in front. Whalen right there coming back on the inside. Will that inside line put the 11 car to the front? Yes. Mike Whalen grabs the lead. JMB back to second. Chad Collins is third. We'll go through the rest of the field. April Bordeaux in the fourth spot. Bill Joyle Sr. is fifth. Timmy Gadway in the 63 runs in the sixth spot. Chris Call is seventh in the sixth. Eighth. As the battle heats up for that number eight spot, is the 44 of Brandon Nolan and the eight of Rob Sign. Eight down, seven remain for Whalen. Top three cars have pulled away from the Bordeaux 23. to go next time by and Mike Whalen has got this one on Cruz. He's opening up on John Michael Brissett who may be falling back just a bit 
as Collins in the 22 is closed in. Five to go for your leader. Top three cars able to work their way by the 44 and the 8 with no problem. Next time by the Popsicle Sticks will be out for Mike Whalen. There'll be two to go. It's strictly a battle for the number two spot right now. Reset's 14 running in the middle of the groove. Collins trying to keep the 22 on the bottom of the racetrack. Two to go. Coming up for Mike Whalen. He will see the white flag as he crosses the start finish line. Collins still trying to run down Brissett in a battle for the number two spot. He looks to the inside. Two. But still Brissett on the outside, holding on to second. Collins will swing to the bottom now to try to get a run coming off turn four. Checkered flag is out. Your winner is Whalen. Second spot as they come to the wire will be the 14 of John Michael Brissett. Chad Collins will finish in the third spot. Fourth spot will go to the 23 of April Porto, edging out the 58. His car, give him a nice round of applause. Mike gets the win. Big smile on Mike's face. He'll come over here. Mike, congratulations. You closed pretty quickly on John Michael Brissett with a 14. And then uh, tell me about the winning pass that you made. Oh, I don't even remember the winning pass. I'm just, I was in a zone and just drove it. <laughs> I don't know, I'm speechless. <laughs> well, it's always great to uh, get to victory lane. Is this a first? Yeah, first one, but it could have been on a points night at least. Well, hey, you'll take the checkered flag no matter how you get it. Yep. Congratulations and enjoy. Thank you. All right, so Mike Whalen gets his first checkered flag, albeit on a non-points night, but 